so it's Saturday morning. We're headed up to the farm to grab my skid steer. Um, I've been, I was using it this week and it kept blowing a fuse every time I went to go shut it off. Um, and that's part of the stuff that I added in when I did the common swap in it. I have a electric actuator that's wired into a push button and that's what pulls the shutdown lever on the side of the injection pump. So something's going on there. Um, it's probably gonna be a shorted wire or the solenoid is shorted out because it's been getting wet and the machine's been sitting outside. Um, so we're gonna go grab that. We got the trailer hooked up, bring that back to the house, fix that. There's a couple other little small things I wanna take care of on that since it's getting a lot of use now. And uh, we'll see what else we got going on for the rest of the day and the rest of the weekend. So stay tuned. Almost forgot. Ain't going nowhere. Got the skid steer back to the house. I got some new tires for it a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, it's really muddy up the farm, plus pushing shit, really. So here's that shutoff solenoid I was talking about before. I just disconnected it to check the electrical, and, and everything looks kind of good. So I'm just gonna jump right to it and just supply some auxiliary power to this and see what it does. And like I said, it's it's probably just shorted, and uh, if it is shorted, then gotta try to find another one. All right, so I hooked up a jumper wire to it and it actuated off of this. Um, so I just kind of worked it back and forth by hand and then also electrically and I just put a new fuse in up front and now it works. Um, so I do have like the lights are tied into the same circuit and this is tied into the same circuit. So it's possibly that it's just a little bit overloaded. Um, this solenoid is a little bit overkill for what it is. And right now it's hooked up to 
this extra side button here that I put in right next to the horn. However, the key does have a function to turn back from the off position. And I think that I want to, at some point in time, use that to be the shutdown. So instead of pushing the button to shut down, you just turn the key all the way off. It's um, so like this is off here and it springs back that way. And that's, that's I believe, for the old glow plug function of the original motor that came in this um but this 33 cummins does not have glow plugs so i don't need that but um it's got a new fuse in it and i think we're good i am going to just take this solenoid off quick and blow out these openings here um it can get wet in there and i have a feeling that's part of what the issue is is it may just be starting to rust up a little bit inside so i'm going to clean it out the best i can and then fill it in with some dielectric grease just to stop water from getting in there. So the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm in here is there's the factory um, glass style fuse that goes in here. Um, the end of it is broken. And since I have it at the house, I'm gonna put in a normal fuse holder um, with the blade on it. And then the other thing that doesn't work that I'm gonna take a look at quick is the fuel gauge where it just simply stopped working. Um, it's acting like it's got no power going to it. So obviously, if you can see, it's not the prettiest thing in here. Um, there's definitely lots of evidence of mice. Before I got this machine, it was outside for probably two years, uncovered just in the middle of this guy's yard. Um, so yeah, that's what you get for that. Uh, at some point in time, I do wanna go and make new ones of these out of aluminum and then probably remake most of this wiring harness as well. All right, I think that this thing is all set for today. Um, running out of time, I gotta get this back up to the barn because I have to go get hay tomorrow. So I gotta make sure this is there so I can unload the hay. And then we have to go run and pick up a horse tonight um, in a couple hours. So I gotta make sure I give myself enough time to get everything all set up for that as well. Um, did not get the fuel gauge working. I checked and I'm getting voltage coming out, like nine volts, which sounds about right, out of the gauge, or sorry, out of the sending unit. And then I have the same voltage up top, that nine volts and change up at the fuel gauge. The gauge has good power, good ground. Honestly, I think that the gauge just went bad. Um, so probably just gonna not do anything with it and just you know keep an eye on fuel level and keep it topped off as best as we can. Um, put some fresh grease in all the joints that I could. Um, the front tilt cylinders here and the tilt bushings down there are completely smoked on this. So that's a project that needs to get done. I'm not sure when that's going to get done. So I'll have to order parts and figure out how I'm going to do that. And hopefully nothing is too far gone with that. And then this cylinder leaks pretty bad. Just haven't had a chance to order the rebuild kit for that yet. But other than that, it's a damn good machine. You've seen a couple of the other videos putting the engine in and, and stuff like that. Really have no complaints about it. It does everything I need it to do. Like I said, I got some new tires put on it, and that helped out a lot. And uh, that's it. So we're going to get this loaded back up onto the trailer and dropped off at the barn and then switch plans and get ready to go get a horse. frosty morning uh, it's Sunday we're headed up to grab the trailer from the farm 
because I left it up there last night after dropping off the horse in the horse trailer, which is still up there. Uh, so we're gonna grab the trailer, go up and grab a load of hay, and then make one or two stops on the way back to the farm, unload the hay, and then make our way back home and probably take care of some other small little miscellaneous stuff. But uh, it's starting to get cold out. Not that 30 degrees is cold, but when it's still 65, sometimes in the 70s during the day, 30 degrees in the morning certainly feels pretty cold. But that's New England for you. Got uh, all the marshmallows loaded up. I got a load of 10. I put them on the pallets because it makes them a lot easier to take off. We don't have a set of grabbers for the skid steer. We just have forks. So we're able to pick them off with the, the forks on the skid steer and not worry about poking through the wrap on the bale. And that way, keep them intact. We can storm outside and makes our life a lot easier. So they're all strapped down. And uh, of course, I got the reusable zip ties there holding everything in place so we're gonna head out of here and run through a few errands and we'll be back at the farm you already know when i said i need to run an errand it means getting taco bell i mean <clears throat> taco bell is great but i actually had to go to lowe's but i can't pass up a taco bell especially when it's breakfast hours hell yeah <laughs> 